Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. This video series will be a bit different from my usual content as we're taking a deep dive in my creative process. We will go through the creation of this render in real time and I'll try to share everything that I take into account while creating the final look. Enjoy! So the first thing I'm going to do is open a reference, I already have some downloaded so I'll just drag and drop it in the scene. I'm modeling this bottle of bourbon. So it's four roses. There's something interesting about this bottle. So we have a shape that's sort of a square-like transitioning into a uh, circle. So let's start with adding a plane and we're gonna keep it flat to the ground. We're gonna take care of the scale later and let's just push it in front of the uh, reference image. So measure it to size and what we're going to take care of first is to actually bevel the edges we're going to create the softness in in that shape so we can just hit ctrl shift b i'm going to give it just one division so that we have a nice smooth shape and from here i want this to transition to the round part at the bottom so for that I'm going to add uh, a few additional subdivisions. So let's add five on this side, five on this, five here, and five here. Okay, now we have enough geometry to create a actual circle, so we can duplicate that. Then right click, then from loop to select circle. Now, uh, if you don't have loop tools enabled, all you can do is hit Alt Shift S and this will create your geometry into a circle. Of course, something that's not going to take care of is the spacing of those uh, vertices. So I'm just going to use, like I said, loop tools and use it to make a circle. Then we're going to scale it along the reference. And as you can see, your reference is slightly tilted to one side. So I'm just going to pick one of the two sides and use that for my uh, vantage point so i will orient all my geometry along this side now i'm going to bring this a little up and then extruding along the z-axis let's create the bottom of the shape i'm going to try to be as generous with the polygons as possible we want to have enough density so that it holds the final shape. Now here's something that I'm noticing. There's a slight rotation to our disc. Uh, this happened when we, uh, there's a slight rotation to our base. This happened when we converted it to a circle. For some reason, sometimes loop tools does that. And in order to bridge those faces, I'm going to need to delete only the polygons. So. Uh, hit X and select only faces. Now we can select this loop, this loop, and hit bridge. Okay, now there's a slight misalignment. We can come to the settings and actually change the twist. Okay, now everything's looking a lot better. The other thing that I'm going to do is add a few additional segments. I'm going to increase this number up until we reach a point where we have only squares, so only rectangle polygons or at least close to rectangles. This will give us the smoothest result and that way we can easily create UVs. Now for example if we have something like this and in Blender it won't be a problem but if we export it to another program like 3ds Max for example that type of topology, once you smooth it using a turbo smooth modifier or something like that, it will completely stretch out the UVs. That's why we are keeping a more um, well spaced topology instead of using large polygons. And let's take care of the bottom. Judging by the look of it, there's a small flat shape and there's a shape extruding up. One thing that I'm going to do is hit Ctrl F and from here we're looking for grid fill okay looks good the rotation is well aligned so i'm going to take that middle vertex and i'll try to create that rounded shape that we have in the reference so for that i'm going to use the soft selection and instead of using the smooth interpolation we just go into sphere hit ctrl 
uh, I hit G and then along the Z axis and using the scroll mouse which is going to control the fall off maybe a little smaller fall off okay something like that looks looks actually good great now once we hit turbo smooth and we take care of the normals so if you ever see that kind of issue in your in your in your models when you're when you're turbo smoothing when you're actually using subdivision surface it means that you have a problem with the normals and just to make sure we can go into our display settings and hit face orientation and yeah as you can see there are some inverted normals so let's get rid of that because it's kind of annoying select everything hit shift 10 which is the default uh, the default shortcut and i'm just going to add a few additional loops a few support loops so that we have some sharp edges here in in the base of our bottle okay this looks fairly good just a few more adjustments i'm going to pull this up yeah that that looks a lot better a lot like a lot more like a bottle now let's take the top polygons actually the top edges extrude them again we're going to make them into a circle and scale them until they fit the size of the neck of the bottle and extrude up so apparently we need to make this smaller so let's hit scale and then i'm going to hit shift z so that i scale along the x and y axis and as you can see it scales uh, uniformly uh, everywhere except along the height okay now that we have the basic shape set we can actually add some additional loops for here i'm just going to bevel actually is bevel a good option yeah it seems like we need we we need that smooth result <coughs> then i'm going to add a few extra loops but first i'm not going to bevel first let's hit ctrl z a few times i'm going to set the curvature of of our bottle so the overall shape yep and then i'm going to bevel for a simple reason that bevel goes along the edges and once i try to once i try to move these we will get a weird sharp angle here which i don't want we want actually really nice smooth surfaces okay great now there are a few other support loops that we need to add like right here let's create the geometry for the lip of our bottle then we're going to extrude and scale so that we start creating the thickness of the bottle extrude z again i'm going to extrude one more time or actually let's not do that there's a much easier way we're going to take everything then we're going to hit extrude this will extrude all the faces but as you can see it's extruding them in a weird axis now it's extruding them along the z uh, what i want is to actually hit out and s and this will extrude along the normals and that way we can give the thickness of our bottle now there are a few places where i need to check so let's go into our frame the places are like here where we have support edges so sometimes those support edges will overlap so i'll just take care of those and make some space for them so that we have a nice smooth transition and let's see up here everything looks fine okay let's add a few more support edges and create the actual lip of the bottle i'll add an edge bevel it with just one segment and use alt yes to, to give it thickness uh, i'm using scale and and translate a lot to actually match the shape of the bottle there are a few other edges that i might want to add like right here just give it a little bit of thickness yeah that that looks okay maybe another edge here basically you want enough subdivisions so that it supports the curvature of your objects even without without actually having subdivisions so if i remove uh, my subdivisions as you can see everything still looks and holds the shape of the bottle everything still looks relatively smooth the only place that doesn't look okay is here uh, so let's see maybe maybe we actually need to add 
add some additional geometry and we're going to space out the polygons a little bit and we're going to do that on the inside too so that we have a nice even surface and a nice even thickness okay now that we are done with that we can take care of the bottle cap for that i'm just going to select an edge ring from here i'm going to hit shift d and copy that and scale it a little bit and then separate it in another selection great now from here let's try to match again the reference i'm going to extrude it along the z-axis then cover the lip and for now i'm going very rough but in a second we will add a few more subdivisions so that we match the shape better now let's scale along the x and y axis again so that we basically inset the vertices bring them a little up for the main reason that there is a slight curvature here so so this shape is fairly soft we're going to try to match that and again use our little polygon fill so grid fill now it's a little bit offset so we can go into the grid settings and instead of using the span the span will determine how many vertical and horizontal divisions we have we don't want that we actually want them to be equal but we're going to control the offset great and once again we're going to use our soft selection to actually smooth out smooth out that shape great now what we need to do is uh, actually add a few more subdivisions great and add a few support loops i'm doing it using bevel because it gives a nice smoothness to the overall shape if i was creating a metal object something that has very hard edges i would simply hit ctrl r and bring the edges very close to the to the edge that i'm trying to keep sharp so once we subdivide it as you can see here we have a very smooth transition well here we actually have a very sharp now we don't want that so let me just fix it i'm going to bevel this edge also and every time i bevel i'm making sure that i haven't selected other edges so for example often i'll have some edge selected but i'm starting to work here and i'm wondering what's going on what i need to do i select another edge and i hit ctrl b and suddenly i've beveled two things so i always make sure by hitting alt a to select everything and then i actually bevel things okay now we have the cap actually we can we can even make this a little smoother so by hitting g twice we actually slide our edges along their uh, along their their adjacent we are sliding the vertices along their adjacent edges so that we actually hold the same shape but we are continuing the the transition of the surface okay to finish the cap we actually need to model its final piece at uh, the bottom of it actually let's bring this up so that we create the hardness here the hard edge then extrude down again do that fill it again with polygons we're going to add a hard edge now i don't really care about the rotation here here's something that we can do we can just select everything hit ctrl v and from here we can select smooth vertices hit shift r a few times to repeat the last operation and we have a perfect cap so let's isolate it yeah looks exactly like our reference okay next thing that we want is to add the liquid for that i'm going to go into faces mode select one of the uh, rings of faces in the upper side just hit h so that i hide it and now once i select one of the one of the faces on that side i can hit ctrl l this will select everything that is connected to this face and we're separating the selection by the hidden polygons so once i unhide it we have a perfect shape for our whiskey for the liquid so let's hit shift d to duplicate that and i'll hit p to separate it in a different object okay now we can actually use Alt and S to scale it along the normals. And when you're 
creating liquids inside of glass or when you're stacking transparent objects, it's usually good to have some kind of overlap. That way the rendering actually is accurate. Instead of having rendering artifacts, uh, once we go into the rendering part, I'll give you a good example for that. Okay, uh, here's something interesting. We actually want this to be flat. So let's scale it on the Z axis. And one thing that I want is to create a little lip for the liquid because every time liquids touch a a vertical surface the surface tension of the liquid creates a small lip so let's create that by bringing the up uh, the edges a little bit to, to down the z-axis again extrude and scale and grid fill and of course we need to normalize the polygons. Great, we are almost ready. Now we're left with our little, we are left with the leather strap that's uh, at, the, at the neck of the bottle. So in order to create that, I'll start with just a simple edge loop. Okay, one more thing, let's just add a few edges so that we don't have any kind of stretching, stretching in the UVs. We want to keep nice and uniform topology. And from here, I'll select one of these edge rings, duplicate it, scale it just a bit and separate it. Okay, so in order to start creating that geometry, if we take a look at uh, another reference, let me just find it. If we take a look at another example, so this is Four Roses Bourbon. <clears throat> we can see that the actual strap has a uh, little fold here and there's a uh, changing shape so that it locks onto itself and we're going to try to recreate that. Now, how is this going to happen? First, we're going to First, we're going to separate the circle so that it's not a it's not a complete circle, but so that we have a uh, loop that's kind of meeting its uh, beginning and an end. And from here, we can enable again the soft selection. I'm going to use linear, and it's a really simple trick. We're just going to place the 3D cursor somewhere on that side. We're going to use it as a pivot. Now, once we rotate, this actually straightens out the edges. Let me just bring it to the side. So let's see. Yeah, let's bring it here. And I'm going to do the same on that side. And of course, one thing that I'm going to try to do is actually, actually match where my polygons are meeting. So once we have our loop created, we can disable the soft selection and I'm going to just extrude a few more polygons. So this will be one end of our leather strap and this will be the other end. Let's see, this one needs to be longer. Now there are a few ways to do it. I'm just extruding, but you can control left click if that's more convenient to you it doesn't really matter so from here let's extrude everything along the z-axis I'll try to match the height from the reference so let's do that it should be around this tall great and we also need to add a few subdivisions the way that i'm picking how many subdivisions i want will depend on the shape i know that somewhere here there needs to be a hole that is around this big so that's why i have so many subdivisions so i have one two three I have six subdivisions here now so this geometry this geometry kind of folded but I'm just going to delete it and let's use a, a median point for a pivot for our translations scale a little bit and from here we can just scale this quite a lot so that we get that 
that shape that we saw, that sort of heart-shaped form for the end of our for the end of our strap. And let's let's scale those in too. Great. Uh, oh, not so great. I misclicked. That happens from time to time. You should always pay, pay attention to what exactly you're doing. And hmm, maybe we just need this moved a little bit out. Yeah, just like that. This, this makes a lot more sense as a shape. And now we can take these polygons, actually and set them a little bit, delete everything. And from here, we're just going to use again extrude out yes to give some thickness to our to our object. And now there's a little bit of overlap, but it's very easy to fix. We're just going to use again smooth selection. But I'll hit connected only so that I'm not moving all of the all of the vertices. Great. And there's a few things that I want to fix too. Like I want a much smoother smoother transition here instead of the harsh one that we had. Yeah, that that actually looks better. Now let's see how that looks. Come on. So it's here. Okay, so it's a little small. One thing that we can do is just, just scale it. I'm gonna scale it on the X and Y axis, so everywhere except for the Z axis. Great. We have the overall shape. I can get rid of that. And one thing that I need to add here too is just the hole. So let's select these polygons and these on the other side oh no these these uh, right click create circle now there's a small problem with the rotation first i'm going to get rid of flatten and then let's let's play with the angle till those edges are still standing straight uh, i kind of don't like it like that okay let's do it one by one Apparently, apparently something's messing up. First, we're going to unify the normals. And again, go with the circle. That looks great. And do the same here. Circle. Yep, here we gotta fix the rotation. Great. And now we can select those two edge loops and hit bridge. Okay, that looks kind of weird. Why does it look like that? What happens when I bridge them? Oh, okay. I see what happens. Let's get rid of the segments. I needed to actually to uh, unify the normals again, and I need to fix the twist. Great. Okay, now we have the hole. I can actually make it a little smaller by extruding along the normals again. And from here, I need to add a few additional uh, support loops. So I'm going to add them along the whole length of our object because I want these edges to be more or less sharp once we activate Turbo Smooth. Okay, that doesn't look bad at all. Hmm, do I want to make them sharper? Actually, actually, no. They look they look okay for now. Yep, that's that's pretty good. Great. And we're almost done with the model. There's one thing that I always do at the end of modeling. I usually pick the biggest object that I have from my model. Let's just subdivide it. Then I will try to make sure I select one of the edges that's at the very bottom of our object hit shift and s select cursor to selected and then i'm going to set the pivot point to uh sorry i'm going to set to the origin to the 3d cursor and i'm going to do that for every object <clears throat> great now let's uh 
take the cursor to the world origin and move our object to the very center of our scene. Now, one thing that we're left to finish is actually going to learn and figure out the size of our bottle. Now, this is quite large. Uh, I already know that this bottle should be 10 centimeters in wide, so I'm just gonna scale until I get into that into that uh, into that size. Maybe just slightly larger. Now, it's pretty important when you're using ray tracing render engines to keep actual scale for your object, so model everything in scale. If possible, look for actual for the actual measurements of your objects and use that as a reference. Last thing I'm going to do is hit Ctrl A and reset the rotation and scale. And now we have a nice bottle. We can move on to unwrapping our object and creating textures that are specific for our shaders. In the next video, we will cover the UVs and texturing. Subscribe for more videos and thanks for watching.